Hi everyone, happy Tuesday and welcome back to my channel. It's been a week or so since I've made a video but I am back and I hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. Today I am studying a new series of soaps and these are my vacation soaps. So I am making mountain retreat soap today. I'm starting out, I have added my lye water solution to my oils and I have brought them to a thin trace. I am splitting off just a couple of uh, containers of soap and I'm going to colour the first with activated charcoal. I'm going to put about two or two and a half teaspoons of activated charcoal into this container. I want to make sure this is a really nice deep dark black colour. So I'm going to mix that just by hand with my stick blender and make sure I have depth of colour that I'm looking for and then I'm going to go ahead and use my stick blender as it is intended to be used and bring that to a nice thick trace. With this soap I am doing a sculpted layer soap but I'm going to try and do this without using any sculpting tools or any traditional sculpting tools. So for the first layer I need it to be nice and thin so that I can shape the layer into what I'm looking for. I did realize that I need a little bit more soap in this layer so I am emptying my container into a larger bucket and adding a little bit more of my base soap into it. I'm going to stir that in and make sure I'm happy with the depth of the color still and I still am and I'm going to go ahead and bring that back to a nice thick trace. Once I've got all of that mixed in I'm going to go ahead and stir in my essential oils by hand. And I'm using a blend of spearmint, fir and orange. It's a really fresh, vibrant blend of essential oils with just a little bit of woodsy undertones to it. Perfect for a mountain retreat. So I'm going to go ahead and stir that all in and make sure it's fully incorporated into my soap before we start putting this soap into the mold. It is time for the first layer. And this layer is going to be the black silhouette of some mountains. So I'm going to divide my soap batter into about three parts. So I'm putting a third into each mold and leaving a third of my soap batter in my container. The reason that I'm going to do that is because I'm also doing kind of an ombre technique with my mountains. Now my soap has set up quite a bit and it is now at a point where I can move it into the shape that I want it to. You can see here I'm using one of my spatulas and I am just forming the soap into one of the mountain peaks. Now with this soap I am going to have two mountains in my first layer, um, one on the left and one on the right. So I am moving my soap to create the valley down the middle. Now my soap has set up just a little bit more, I'm using two spatulas to bring up the sides of those mountains and create the peak. I found using my spatulas gives me a really rustic look to my mountains and it makes them more realistic, it gives them kind of jagged edges like mountains have rather than the smooth, smooth edges that um, the sculpting tools would give this soap. So I'm going to keep working with my spatulas and bring the soap into a peak. I'm going to try and get them into quite a high peak and as the soap sets up it's going to hold the peak more and more. And right at this point I have um, nearly no soap in the middle. So we're going to move on to layer 2 and to form this layer I have poured some more of my base soap colour into what was left of the first layer and I'm going to mix that in with my spatula and make sure I'm happy with the colour. Once I have that all mixed in I am going to add a little bit more of my essential oil blend um, to scent the unscented part and then I'm going to bring that back to a thick trace with my stick blender. So we're repeating the same process for the previous layer at this point. And I'm going to try and get this layer to be as thick as possible so I don't have to wait very long to sculpt it. And the longer I take with the layers, the more my base soap is going to set up, so the less stick blending I have to do. You can see I have a nice thick consistency and I do apologise about my focus on my camera. It doesn't love focusing on the black soap unfortunately. But 
I am spooning in my grey soap, so my second layer, into the middle of the soap, so I'm scooping it into the valley, and then I am wiping my spatula on the side of the mould to get a little bit of soap right where I want it, and I can add that, push that down into the valley at the side of the mould. And that's going to form my next layer of mountains. So this layer, you can see it's a slightly lighter colour, it's a dark, dark grey colour. And I'm going to have three peaks to this mountain. One right in the middle and one on either side of the mould. And I'm going to make this so that the ones on either side aren't quite touching the side of the mould. So you will be able to see that they are a little bit of a peak. You can see how well this soap has set up. I am using my spatula and I'm just running it along the edge of the soap. It's forming the peak nicely without using my second spatula at this point. It's giving me those jagged mountainy edges that I'm looking for, but it's holding its shape and its position and I'm able to smooth out the edges with my spatula. Now that that layer has set up, we are going to move ahead onto the third mountain layer and this is the last layer of mountains. So I'm going to put a good amount of my soap into the bowl that has about a third of that grey layer and I'm going to mix that in so you can see I'm going to be left with a light light grey colour. So when you look at this soap it's going to look like the mountains fading into background. I'm stirring that in with my spatula to make sure that my colour is evenly distributed adding some more of my essential oils and then I'm going to again use my stick blender to bring this to a nice thick thick trace before I form this into the last layer of mountains. And the reason that I use my spatula to make sure that the colour is so dispersed is because this soap is very thick at this point and this doesn't require much stick blending at all. So I'm once again spooning my soap into my mould and I'm going to try and form two mountain peaks with this one. I'm going to form one on the left and one on the right. I want them to incorporate all of the mountain peaks that we have previously made and I want them to be a little bit offset from the previous ones. So I'm just spooning the soap into the mould to get it roughly where I need to and then I can start using my spatula to form the mountain peaks. It is easier to do this when the soap mould is closer to me. So I have worked on the first one and formed those peaks already as you can see. And now I'm working on my second mould. So I'm moving the soap that is closest to me all the way over to the edge of the mould uh, to form half a peak on that side. And then forming the mountain in the third that's closest to the camera to form that peak. And these little spatulas that I purchased from the Dollar Tree are great for this task because they're nice and rigid. All right, it's time to work on the sun and it took me a while to figure out how to make a sun without creating an embed or using a sculpting tool. But actually I'm just using a Walton 1M piping tip and I've colored my soap with turmeric. And I'm just piping the sun in and this piping tip is going to give me a fiery looking sun you'll be able to see the rays of the sun. I did set aside a little bit more soap than I really needed but I am going to go ahead and use it all and pipe a few layers of sun into my mold and that hopefully will just give me more uh, rays of the sun. So my sun's going to look nice and fiery as it's setting down behind the mountains once I cut this soap. All right, folks, my sun is in the, in the molds and it is time to work on the sky. So I'm adding some indigo powder to what is left of my soap and you can see that that has set up quite a bit. I want this sky to be a nice deep blue. Uh, so I've added about half a teaspoon of indigo powder I added in what's left of my essential oil blend and that's going to help loosen up this soap just a little bit as I work that colour into my soap. I am going to use my stick blender once I've got all of this mixed in by hand just to make sure that everything is evenly distributed. And 
I'm pretty happy with that colour. There are a couple lumps still in this, so I'm going to work those out with my stick blender, but I would like the colour to be just a little bit lighter. So I have mixed some zinc oxide with about two tablespoons of sunflower oil, and I'm mixing that into my blue colour to lighten it up. And I did stick blend that to evenly distribute it. Now I want to make sure that this soap is going to get in between the ridges of that sun and not flatten them out too much. So I'm spooning my blue soap on nice and gently to right on top of that sun to get in between all of those ridges. And I'm going to distribute it evenly amongst my two molds, just focusing on getting it in between the ridges of the sun. Alright, now I have those suns nice and covered up, I'm going to get the rest of this blue soap into the mould and then tap it down to get the soap right into the ridges and make sure that I don't have any air bubbles in this soap when I cut it. Because of the thickness of this soap and the design, there might be a few air bubbles, but I will be able to fix those before I sell the soap. So I have let the soap set up for about 5 minutes and it's set up to a point where I can create the texture on the top of the soap that I create on all of my soaps. This isn't as set up as some of my previous soaps as you can tell so the definition in the ridges isn't quite as strong as in the past but I like this soap to be a little more of a flat top. Uh, it should really make the peaks of the mountains stand out. And you can see that I am not bringing my spoon down too deep into the soap. I don't want to go through onto any of the mountain layers and mess up those layers we've created. I'm going to finish this soap, with some, this soap up with some of my Epsom salt. So I have some in a little container here and I'm just sprinkling that on the top of my soap. It's going to look like the stars in the night sky just as the sun is setting below the mountains. And the stars are waiting to peek through into the sky. So I'm sprinkling that down the middle of the soap. I am being pretty generous with it. Some of this will fall off as I cut the soap. So I'm being fairly liberal. So here is a close up look at the top of this soap. I love the effect that those Epsom salts give to the dark blue background and the texture on the top of this bar. All right, it is the next day and I am back to cut my soap. It is fully set up and ready to be cut. So I'm placing my soap on my multi-bar cutter so that the ends are evenly spaced. I'm going to remove those two pieces and then we'll have a look at the inside of the soap. I'm so excited to see how this soap turned out and see how the piping worked. Just look at that fiery sun. I love the partial gel face that I have going on here. It just gives that outer edge of the sun a really nice fire effect and the piping with that Wilton tip has given like the perfect kind of hazy fiery end of the day look to the sun dropping behind those mountains. I love the rugged look on the mountain side it's not completely smooth it's much more realistic looking for the mountains that which would never have completely smooth sides you get little nooks and crannies and little cliff edges. I think this is one of my favorite bars in the batch with the shape of the mountains and the fiery sun. I'm so thrilled with how this soap turned out and it just goes to show you you don't need any specialized sculpting tools or anything like that to make a sculpted layer soap. So let's have a look at some final pictures of this soap. You can see that that sun has retained its fiery look and the Epsom salts on top just look like the night sky. I'm thrilled with the way this soap turned out. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next Tuesday.